The cactus plants that you see surrounding me are called chain fruit choyas, but they also have a more sinister name. To some, they're known as the jumping choya because there are those that believe that these innocent looking spiny joints travel dozens of feet and then without warning, burrow deep into your skin or clothing. Well, I'm here to debunk this myth and set the record straight. Okay, now this is how it works. Now on each one of these spines, there's a sheath. And underneath that sheath, there are minute scales that point in a downward direction. And when you touch this with your finger or clothing, you go down on the scales fine. But when you pull away, the bottom of one or more of these scales flips up. And it reminds me sort of of a 60s hairdo, woman's 60s hairdo. And that's what catches you. That's what grabs your skin or your, or your clothing. Now these things are really minute, even in, a, in front of a microscope. But believe me, they're there. It takes only the most casual contact, the lightest possible touch, for one of these choya joints to grab onto you. And when they do, they hold onto you more tenaciously than they were holding onto the plant that they came from. Sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. And the result is the choya joint breaks free of the mother plant and jumps onto you for a free ride. Oh. Now you got to figure out how to get the dang thing off of you. The usual method that's recommended for extracting a choya joint that's stuck to you in some ways is to use a comb. You slide the tines of the comb between the material and the choya joint. But, you know, who carries a comb out in the desert? C could I see a show of hands who has a, anyone who has a comb with them right now? Yep, that's what I thought. So let's look for another more practical method of extracting that choya joint. A couple of sticks will work. Here's a couple here. Basically anything that the spines won't stick to. You always want to put equal pressure on either side of the joint, not just one side because you'll roll it and you'll have more spines in you. So equal pressure on both sides and you fling it. Now once you've freed yourself from the joint's spiny clutches and gotten your bleeding under control, you'll most likely find the joint lying in a position like this. Now if this was the cooler time of the year, this plant, say, in, uh, in midwinter to late spring, chances are reasonably good that this little joint will form roots and grow into a brand new plant that will be genetically identical to the plant that it came from. And because these pesky, spiny segments rarely travel very far, they have a tendency to form large colonies. And that's why we call them choya forests. Well, I've been hiking through this Choya forest for over an hour, and I have been extraordinarily careful about not getting any ways near these Choya plants. So, as you can see, jumping Choyas really don't jump. We'll see you next time.